Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Rosie, this is my husband Jeremy. Hello. We recently spent one month in Cambodia, so I thought I would give you a little bit of an update and talk about kind of each place that we went to, our favorite things we did, any advice that I have, tips, tricks, that kind of thing. So we <laughs> went to two places in Cambodia. We went to Phnom Penh, which is the capital, and then we went to Siem Reap. So we've talked about Phnom Penh. Um, we stayed in a beautiful apartment, by the way. I will leave it linked down below. It's somewhere where it's a hotel and apartment block, so there are people that live there full time, but you can also rent a room with a kitchen and bathroom and things like that, like a mini apartment space without a lounge. But the rooftop has a pool, which is beautiful for sunset. You get views over the river, over the city, over all the tower blocks and things like that. But also at sunset, it was insane. So we loved going up there and swimming. So I'm definitely going to leave that down below because that was beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a good accommodation. Yeah, a bit more expensive than anything that we had. Yeah, previously. Uh, overall in Vietnam and stuff like that. But yeah, it was hard finding an accommodation in Phnom to be honest, based on our requirements of like yeah. not staying in hostel, good Wi-Fi, quiet, stuff like that. Um, I really struggled to find something that I wanted to stay in, to be honest, based on reviews and pictures and everything. So uh, we had to spend a little bit more on that. We'll talk about that in another video. Yeah, we're going to be doing yeah. a finance video talking about accommodation yeah. and food and day trips and stuff. But yeah, I mean, even if it was more expensive compared to Vietnam, in the grand scheme of things, it was very affordable. But yeah, a nice apartment, very quiet, good internet, rooftop was sick. Yeah. Uh, you had the Wi-Fi on the rooftop as well, you know, shade, yeah. so you could even walk up there and go for a dip and stuff like that, which was cool. The view was incredible. How many floors were there? I can't remember now. 13? Yeah, yeah it seemed higher than that, but yeah, the swimming pool was on the 12th yeah. floor. So we will leave that linked down below if you want to stay there. But our experience with Phnom Penh, so we enjoyed it. Um, we were there, So we were there for two weeks. So when we were in Vietnam, just to give you a little bit of context, we went to five different places and kind of spent four, well, five or six nights in each place. We kind of kept moving around. And then that was exciting and awesome. But then in Cambodia, we were like, okay, we're a bit tired. Let's like hang out a little bit. So we did two weeks in Phnom Penh and two weeks in Siem Reap rather than kind of swapping around every five days. So we did spend two weeks there, which was a little bit longer than the other places. And I think it felt like that. Um, we definitely did the top things to do. Like we went to the Royal Palace. We went to the old temple that next to that we went to the temple that's on the hill nearby um we did lots of cool stuff i think it was a good opportunity for us to get some work done honestly as well because obviously we're traveling and we're working it was a good chance to kind of work 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 and then go out every couple of days to see stuff so it was a little bit of a different experience for us because like i said in vietnam we were like here there and everywhere we hadn't really got into the like digital nomad life we were like being a tourist for a month and then our work was kind of second took a back seat almost. So then in Cambodia, it was like, okay, we really need to get some work done. So I think we spent a lot of time working. What did you think of Phnom Penh? Cause it wasn't your favorite. No, it's probably been my least favorite place we've been to out of this trip. Why? It's It was a big city, but I didn't feel the city was particularly, it didn't have anything special. Mm. I don't know, like Hanoi had something very different that I really liked. Like Phnom Penh in a sense was just like a big city and I didn't feel it was particularly like, I don't know, charming or, or pretty or... There was a few cool things cool things to see, but I think if I if I had to recommend someone to stay, I would say like stay maybe five days, probably something like yeah. that. Like you can probably see the main spots, but it's not a place where I just enjoy walking around and hanging around and just visit without doing anything special uh, i didn't really feel connected in this way yeah to it because oftentimes when we arrive in a new city we kind of arrive for example on the monday then on the tuesday we'll just have a day walking around exploring our neighborhood we don't have any plans nothing on to do list just so we can kind of get a feel for the city and like you said i feel like there wasn't that kind of charm like i said i think like hanoi was like that had like every corner felt like a like a movie scene like a movie set and like Saigon was another big city we went to, but that was kind of like cool and hip and like... Yeah, it was different. Yeah, it was different. I don't know, yeah. And also like the, yeah, the visits that we did, some some visits were really interesting. The, the school that was turned into a prison. Yeah. I can't say the name, like Trong or something. Um, the, the, yeah, yeah the, 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 they have a school basically that's a museum, but it was turned into a prison during the Khmer Rouge uh, regime. 
in the 70s so you can go there and you can visit that and then we went to visit the killing fields yeah. which was also a very interesting visit to learn about the what happened in the country and things like that so a little bit like the remnants war museum in, in that we saw in vietnam like along those lines of like some a very enjoyable visit and happy visit but it's something important to know i think when you go in such country to just learn about the history so that was very interesting to go the the royal palace a little bit overrated to be totally honest i think <laughs> yeah. uh, especially for ten dollars and again, like everything was free in Vietnam. Yeah. Every single visit was free or was like one or two dollars. Yeah. So certainly being asked for 10 bucks for just, sorry, seeing another temple and another Buddha. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, I've seen 300 before. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. That was really weird. Um, also, the food was not like even. Yeah, the food. So, Ron, before we carry on, so Jeremy talked about the school that turned into a prison and then it's now a museum and also the killing fields i didn't vlog particularly those days i did get some footage and i did do a video talking about what we learned in our experience so there is a whole video talking about that if you want to go and see there's also a video actually of the palace as well but yeah the food so when we arrived i think i'd already been ill from vietnam for a couple of days so i thought right when i get in cambodia i'm not going to eat any street food for like four days so i went to the shop and bought like avocado pe red pepper pasta. cucumber carrot pasta cereals and i had just like basic basic food to get my tummy back to normal and then i was like yes after four days like, let's go out and eat some street food and then i was just like it's really not all that and i think especially because I loved the food in Vietnam. The pho bo was like my favorite, I loved it. So then to go from having like incredible, delicious food I'd never had before in my life, where like every meal I was like, oh my God, I love this, to then having like rice and chicken with not much flavor and like, it just wasn't, I think we found a couple of places towards the end, didn't we? Yeah, but not We just found a couple of places, but in general, it wasn't like, oh my God. Nothing that I'm gonna remember. No. I mean, apart from those dry sausages, that's somewhat I yeah. like, but no, nothing, nothing like, whoa. Yeah, uh, no. Nothing I would say like, if you go to Cambodia, you need to eat this because yeah, bugs, that, that was the fun part of food. It's like having bugs and like crickets and stuff like that. Could, also a video talking about that. Two yeah, of them. Two of them. Uh, yeah, that was fun for the experience, but no, I mean, it's not a place that would go back to. And if I had to recommend it to someone, I would say go for like four or five days probably. And I think, again, after we saw one neighborhood, yeah, um, we didn't see the whole town. It's a massive, massive, massive city. But I think we stayed in the most important touristic place. Um, yeah, we stayed just by the old market, basically. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. top three things of Pen on Peng. I would say the walk along the river, the Mekong River, yeah. uh, especially by night, uh, it's quite cool. You have like people selling popcorn, popcorn amazing in Cambodia. You reminded me. <laughs> so also at night time walking along the river, there's two roads in particular where <laughs> they're called like lady bars. And basically we walked past one night and there was us two walking down. So people didn't really shout at you, but there was like, I think like two single men behind us. And there's like 30 women stood outside being like, hello, mister, hello, mister, come in, come in, come in, hello, hello, hello. And they obviously try and get you to go into the bar, but also I think if you buy a drink with them, they get tips and things, but you can also buy more services. I'm not gonna go into detail, but uh, that was also interesting when you yeah. mentioned that about the nighttime, I was like, oh yeah, that also. No, but yeah, like a, long, a walk along the river, the Mekong River, for a sunset time, I would say, so you see both, was quite cool. I think I would recommend doing the school slash prison and killing field clearly that, that was yeah. nothing that you should do just to learn about the culture and the history yeah and if i have to pick a third one that we've seen it was this temple on the hill yeah uh that was quite i think quite cool like a nice park and stuff like that oh well, actually something else that we did enjoy there it was going to one of the temple next to the independence building mm -hmm. And we did, uh, we went twice. We did like a one hour meditation to the temple. Yeah. Yeah, so we went once to visit and then we saw the flyer saying like, you know, free meditation on this day, this day, this day, whatever it was. So we went along and that was an experience sitting for an hour in silence. 
like I was expecting some sort of guidance or chanting or something mm. but it was just silence so I really struggled with that but it was fun it was fun to do yeah I would yeah it's, it's, that, was, that was quite interesting It'd be good to leave the the temple where it was and yeah. thing. Okay, I think my top three were the killing fields in the museum, like you said. Not that it was particularly fun, but it was very, very interesting. I probably would say the Royal Palace, even though it was expensive, in terms of, for, like, it was $10 each. It was $20, which is kind of our daily budget, <laughs> just spent on going to look at a temple. Um, it was beautiful. It was interesting. You couldn't go in the main building. You could only look in through the side. Um... But I quite liked it. I don't know. I quite like that one. And then number three, yeah. If I'm struggling for a third, that kind of goes to show how much we loved it. <laughs> but I did enjoy the market next door to us. There was a food market where they had all food stands all around the outside and some mats in the middle, so you could sit in the middle and get food from there, drinks from there, ice cream from I there. I love the idea of it. Yeah. But I don't think it was nice. I think the food was shit. <laughs> and like the ice cream that we had, stunk of durian because it didn't change the. Do you use the same scoop, so I've got, I got like vanilla ice cream or something, you just taste it of durian, yeah, which is yeah. ugh. Um, but then also the market where we were next to as well, the old market, we walked through one time. And I love looking at markets because they're all really different. And what was interesting about this one is that they had a section for like women's beauty. <laughs> so there's all like food and clothes and touristy stuff and underwear and like everything in there. And then there was a section where people were getting their hair done, getting hair extensions, Face. getting facials done, their nails done, foot massages. And you don't often see that in, ma no, in markets. Especially in a random way. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of in the tourist district, but it was only the locals that were in there getting their hair and makeup done. So I found that really interesting as well to kind of walk through and be like, oh, okay. We saw a, f a few markets that were quite cool, like behind our building, like the big one with the dome. Yeah, and, that was a good one. That was like a big, big market that was quite cool. Yeah. So that was Phnom Penh and then we went to Siem Reap. Again, we spent two weeks there. We had a better experience there because I think when we arrived, it's a lot smaller. Um, the city, well, the city centre is a lot smaller. I'm sure that the outskirts is probably quite big, but the city centre itself was quite small. So we were kind of staying out of town in a place called Bed and Beds. I'll leave it linked down below. Um, but it was like a 10 minute walk into town, something like that. So it was far yeah. away enough that it was quiet and no traffic noise and things like that. But it was also close enough to be able to walk into town, get some dinner, walk back again, that kind of thing. Um, in terms of food, we found a really good place that we went to quite a few times, that oh. hand pulled noodle place. Incredible. Incredible place. I'll leave it linked down below. Um, and yeah, an actual just, restaurant. Yeah, an actual restaurant. But yeah, we really, really enjoyed it there. It just felt a lot more friendly, a lot more community if that makes sense i don't know it was just yeah just a nice smaller town with the city center it's everything is like in walkable distance with a yeah. river canal going uh, through the middle so you can have a nice walk along the canal and stuff like that nice um, bridges and yeah like quite quite a cute town nothing invasive like nothing is really tall there for some specific reason that I'm sure Rosie's going to mention. Uh, but, so yeah, it's less like suffocating and stuff like that. It's not like a big, big city, very noisy, polluted and stuff. Uh, they have a really nice night market with plenty of food every day. Mm. And you can also be out of the city in 10, 15 minutes drive and be in the middle of the rural Cambodia and temples and everything. So it's also a really cool location for that. Yeah. So the first night we arrived, we stayed in a posh hotel. I'll leave the two videos that I did talking about that hotel down below as well. So if you want a little bit of luxury somewhere nice with an mm. insanely big swimming pool, I'll leave that link down below so you can go and have a look. So our first night was there. And then the first full day we had, we went on a day trip with the Cambodian Community Dream Organization, which is a charity that's helping lots of communities in Siem Reap. So it provides education to the school children. It provides breakfast for the school children it provides women's um centers and groups to talk about health and education, education for women um, they provide water wells they provide health checks for children they provide farming opportunities for families books books libraries um computers so so much they do loads and loads of good stuff so i'm going to leave that link as well down below i've done two videos talking about that company as well so i'll leave those down below it's going to be full of links but everything's mm -hmm. going to be in there um, so that was our first day. So we had one night in the hotel, then the next day we moved 
to Siem Reap and then the next day we had this day trip so we spent three days there without really seeing the city centre so much. It was like <laughs> so bam, it was, bam, bam. It was interesting. And then we also did three day trips looking around the Angkor Wat temples. So the first day we did a day trip with a company that was organised, it was like a group trip, about 10 of us, something like that. Went to Angkor Wat, Tafram, and then the South Gate or something, one of the gates, and then a sunset Bayon. place. Oh, Bayan Temple as well. So I did lots of cool stuff. And like Jeremy said, we learned about Angkor Wat and Angkor Wat is a certain height. I can't remember. <coughs> how. 65, he does? Oh. Something like that meters high, which means that all the buildings in town aren't above that to respect the fact that Angkor Wat is the tallest building in the area, which we thought was pretty cool. And then we hired a motorbike two of the days and went and visited lots of the temples. So the second day we went to eight different temples, which we hadn't visited before, so they were all brand new and it was awesome. Like some of them, one of them, we were the only people there. Some of them were a bit busier and it was really cool to see that. I've done videos about all this, I'll leave it all linked down below. And then the third day we did around the temples was we went back to uh, Bayon Temple to look at the monkeys. We went to Angkor Wat to have a look around a little bit more chilled. We went to Tafram again as well. Um, so we did that. So we had quite a good experience in Siem Reap because we'd kind of stayed in a posh hotel, did a day trip with a charity and then did three day trips looking around the temples. Yeah. And then on the other days, we were either chilling out by the pool in the hotel, or getting some work done, we'd go out for lunch, go out for dinner and then come back and work at the hotel. We also went to Cafe Amazon a few times to get some work done, which is a nice cafe in town as well, good internet and things. So we had a really good experience there for two weeks. We didn't yeah. feel bored or like we were there for too long like we did with the other place. Um, Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh, yeah. So I definitely would recommend CM Reap. I would, I would stay there for a month. Yeah, we went for two weeks. To and stay there happening. for longer, yeah. rent a motorbike for the month so I can get out whenever I want. Yeah, just a nice little town with a nice vibe and and cool things to do around i mean you're literally 10 minutes away from one of the wonders of the world and yeah <laughs> it's pretty cool to be honest um, um it's very touristy in terms of the market and they're selling you know the shirts with yeah. elephants on them and touristy things and like chopsticks and coconut bowls and magnets and bags and all the rest of it so it is quite touristy and you do get people asking if you want a taxi all the time but apart from that it wasn't too bad, no, considering, like you said, it's one of the biggest things in the world to go and yeah. see. It wasn't, and you could also avoid it. Like we, a few, a couple of times, we walked out yeah. of the town towards like the the outside, not going to the center, and we got lost into some random streets with like local tiny markets and yeah. we were the only white people there. Yeah. Um, and it was really quiet and nice and everything. Like you got a couple of streets like Pub Street and the night market that are just busy and very touristy, but you can easily escape it. Yeah. It's not too much. Okay, so top three things. Eating pork. Yeah. When we did the tour with the CCDO, which is the organization helping people, we we had a guide, he took us to all the places and for lunch we stopped in a, a restaurant, like a random place on the side uh, of the street in the middle of the rural area and outside you had two full pigs uh, cooking on like a barbecue rotating stuff and yeah basically when you sit down you it gives you like some crispy pork yeah chopped in like pieces like that with a salad which was lettuce grated carrots uh some green beans and grated banana tree yeah like the trunk of the tree like the grated and then and really really good with like a really nice sauce that was good from cambodia the mm. salt pepper where you put lime in it and then you dip your pork or your thing in there it was freaking incredible and we loved it so <laughs> much that when we rented the motorbike twice, we went back there. Like, exact the same woman, place. The woman was like, oh, you're back again. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, yeah. it was so, so cheap. Good. It was so good, but it was so cheap. So on yeah, the second ridiculous. day, looking around the temples, we went to like um, 
a restaurant that was outside one of the temples and it was like eight dollars a plate per person for like you know rice and chicken something basic that and the woman was like it's the same price everywhere you know i was like no we know a place yeah <laughs> so it was gonna be like eight dollars per person like 16 dollars and we were like oh that's a bit much for average food so what we did instead was drove like it's 10 minutes to go to this place and i think it was like six dollars for both of us and we got three and we drinks had like two and... or three drinks each like we had three drinks i think in total yeah two plates and i think i asked for even more pork. yeah you asked for extra because <laughs> we loved it so, that much yeah like the meal by itself was like one dollar yeah which was a steal right? I, I would eat the whole pig for this price yeah <laughs> it was delicious okay so the pork was number one yeah <laughs> uh I've, i guess i've got to put Encore in second. You haven't got to. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I would put it. It's, it's pretty incredible. I don't know if I would put Encore Wa or just the whole thing. Like for me, more than just Encore Wa, which is the main temple and is incredible, it's more like the the whole place. If you hire a motorbike and you drive around, honestly, you have to stop. You have to stop every five minutes to see another temple. Yeah. Like the whole. I don't know, it's not a massive square, it's probably like a few kilometers, you know, wide. But the concentration of temples that you have in this small area... Isn't there like 72 or something? Yeah, it's, it's incredible and all of them mm. would be anywhere, would be like a wonder of the world. But because they are next to this massive famous one, Angkor Wat, that's so big, that yeah. is the biggest religious temple in the world, they are kind of forgotten, but like, it's just an incredible area where like... You, you, I mean, you could literally drive around all day and, and be amazed by all the temples and everything. It's, it's very unique for that. And then number three? Uh, in number three, I would... What I would say is a bit of the same. It's like, even if you don't want to see temple, get a motorbike and get outside of the town. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a really nice town. I'm, I don't have anything in Surrey, but... Like, if you drive 10 minutes from the city center, you see a bit more of the real Cambodia and you get lost in the countryside. The view is amazing. It's like rice fields and monkeys and water buffalo and, yeah. and small villages and stuff like that. Farmers, and, yeah. and, just, and you see the people um, and the school and the kids and, and it's very, very different than what you will see in Phnom Penh in the city centre of Siem Reap. It's a whole different lifestyle, yeah. which is probably the majority of actually how people live. And, and if you've seen movies about the Khmer Rouge and stuff like that, it very looks like it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say like get out of the city, it's, it's, it's worth it. Like don't go just to Siem Reap to visit the temple and then go back. Like, spend a few days to try to see a bit of get lost in a, in a random path because yeah. I think it's worth it okay so for me I think my number one would be the day trip that we did the first day we had the motorbike because when we did the day trip with the group there was one woman there who kept winding me up and the guide we couldn't fully understand everything he was saying and Angkor Wat was just so full of people and it's just not my vibe but then when we hired a motorbike we went to different places but like I said one of them was literally just us other places it was really quiet we could have our own schedule do our own thing not have to wait for people not have to yeah. hang around and that was just probably one of my favorite days of the trip this past three and a half months I just loved it so much um so that was really cool that would be my number one yeah number two would be the pork like I never used to eat pork I would like maybe eat sausage but that's kind of it whereas now even now we're, we're going places and they're like oh I want to try the crispy pork just to see if it's as good as that place it's never is it's never, it's never it, going to be the same no. <laughs> but I'm now a pork convert which I haven't been like I've not really eaten pork a lot in my life so that's really cool um and the number three yeah I agree with you with that the cut the um Cambodian Community Dream Organization was awesome. I don't know if they do day trips for non-YouTube yeah, people. Yeah, that's why I didn't mention it, is because it was an amazing day, one of the best day of the trip, but I don't, it's not something that you can just randomly book. And that's why you don't I think, everyone, yeah, so. I'll leave their information down below. You can always email them and ask if you can do a tour with them. I don't know what they would say, but that was really good. The other thing that was fun was seeing monkeys in Bayon Temple. Mm. Bayon, Bayon, I'm not sure how you say it, Bayon, I think. Um, so obviously there's monkeys around because it's the nature and it's the jungle and whatever but in this particular temple there's a lot of them there so we kind of went 
to that temple just to see the monkeys because we'd seen the temple another day and it was really cool to see like the mummers feeding the babies and cleaning the babies there were some pregnant ones there was like you know all the little ones jumping around and playing and the fat dads would walk through and all the little ones would get scared and I don't know it was just really cute to see that One and to them photograph them between the bun or something like that yeah, I was crouching down <laughs> photographing one and it came up behind me and like pushed its hand in my back and I was like, ah! <laughs> So, I don't know, I really enjoyed that because I think you can get really close to them. I mean, they were literally touching me. They took some cool pictures. Yeah, and they were like pulling on my trouser legs and things like that. So you get really close to wild monkeys, which I know is a little bit controver controversial because it's like, they shouldn't be that used to seeing people and that being that close to people. But then also they are in the wild and it's kind of up to them. But obviously they get food from people and yeah, so... Enjoying. Yeah, it was just I, like I've never had a monkey touch me before in real life, or like you know, especially not a, like a zoo or something where you can see them yeah. up close. So I thought that was really cool and really special. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention, m um, my two favourite temples were the Elephant Terrace because I love elephants. I love that one, and then there was another one. I can't remember the name of it. I'll leave it linked down, but there's going to be a fuck ton of links. So enjoy that. Um, but there was one that had elephant statues on each corner, and I oh, loved yeah. that one as well. Yeah, Anything with elephants I love. So that was our top, th was that three from me? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Um, the other thing we forgot to mention is the money. So <laughs> in Cambodia, you have the Cambodian money, and they also operate with US dollars. So it means that it's everything's pain. it's a pain but also everything's kind of a bit more expensive because in vietnam for example something might be 30 or 40 or 50 or 100 or 300 whatever but it's just the currency it just is what it is whereas in cambodia they bump things up to one euro one so dollar. one dollar yeah so for example in vietnam you might get a sandwich for mm. 60 whatever it was i can't remember the the differences but it might equal like 60 cents Whereas in Cambodia, they'll just say one dollar, one dollar. So everything's one dollar to start off with. So it means you don't really get anything cheaper than a dollar, which a dollar is cheap, I know. But it just means that things are a little bit more expensive. And it's also really confusing. So if, even if you go to like the shops and restaurants, it's not just the markets. Like you'll go to like a shop and buy, like when I said I went and bought like um, cereals and yogurts and whatever else I got from the supermarket, you pay with Cambodian money and they might give you back half Cambodian money and half dollars or like all dollars or all Cambodians and you're just like well most of the time you pay in dollars and they give you back like exactly. for example you, you're gonna pay something for four dollars you and you pay with a ten dollar note a ten dollar bill so the thing is like when you take money with a foreign bank card at an ATM they only give you dollars yeah you cannot take out local money with a foreign bank card so basically when you arrive you either have to go to an exchange office if you want to get local money Otherwise, if you go to the ATM, you're gonna end up with dollars, and it's only a hundred dollar bill, which everyone is not happy about. Yeah. So you really, we go to the supermarket, we buy something very cheap, and they give us plenty of change. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you if you pay three with like a ten, they're going to give you maybe a five dollar bill, and then the two dollars left, they're going to give you eight thousand local money because one dollar is about four thousand. In the street, one dollar is four thousand, and then if you go to like real uh, grocery store, real commercial center, they are closer to the real rate, which is like four thousand two hundred, four thousand three hundred. So yeah, it's always a mix. It's it's <laughs> like you get used to it, but clearly it's helping their economy and and it's helping them to put a little bit more money in the in the pocket. Yeah, but it's just good. it's just confusing. Like right? you you always have to. Uh, yeah, have your brain. You need, always need to pay attention to what they give you back and stuff like that, because ultimately you you, you always have like two currency that you always uh, yeah. switch from. So it's especially because Jeremy puts everything on YNAB, which is you need a budget. It's an app we're going to talk about soon, I think. Um, so usually in countries he'll just put in like, okay, we took out this much money, we spent this much money on food, we spent this much money on that, and this, that, and the other. So he can see categories of like, how much was accommodation, how much was food, how much was this, how much that. Yeah. But in Cambodia, it was a nightmare, because yeah. it'd be like, well, I paid 10 euros, but then dollars, but then I got this much in dollars back, and this much in Cambodian like money I, back, yeah. and it was just like I guess 10, I didn't spend 10, I guess 10. And yeah. I, I, I actually spent one, but I don't have any dollars anymore. Thank yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that was really, really confusing. Yeah. No, but yeah, it was. The Siem Reap was a really cool place. Yeah. To go back to that. I would, I would go back for a month. Honestly, it's 
is really cool. Most people there are going to see Angkor, and I don't think you said that, but uh, so when you the to actually get into the temple area, uh, so not in the temple, just to get into the the geographical area where you can see and drive past all the temples, you need a pass. You have plenty of checkpoint on every road, so yeah. you can't even drive around without the ticket to visit so you might as well visit but they sell like one day tickets three days ticket five day tickets we go i think the one day was about 37 dollars yeah 35 37 we took the three days ticket which was about 65 dollars i think yeah. something along those lines around 60 and the five days is probably 80 or 90 something like that so we took three days uh, one with a guide and two on our own. Uh, I would recommend that. Yeah. Uh, if you go, if it was you good have time. To, it was good to get some information from him. And then when we visited the other temples, be like, oh, that looks like a this, or oh, that looks yeah. like that happened, or whatever that he'd already told us about. But yeah, but you do need, which is a bit weird, right? Because if, even if you don't want to go into the temples, just to drive around and visit around, you are using one of your days. Yeah. Um, because I, when you cross a checkpoint, it kind of like, Check your it's tickets, almost like a national like park, yeah. almost. So like, there's lots of roads going in, but you need a ticket to get into the national park. Even if you don't go and look at the elephants, or even if you don't go and look at the tigers, you still need to get access in there, basically. Yeah. So it's, it's something to keep in mind, because you can't just... If you want to go from A to B, you can't just drive through if you don't have a pass. You're going to have to go like all the way around for whatever reason. So yeah. it's something to just consider. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's popular. Millions of people go there, but there is a reason. It's, it is unique i mean i've never seen anything like that in the world and and it's top, pretty stunning top tip i will say a lot of people go to angkor wat first thing in the morning for sunrise and then a lot of people go to angkor wat mm -hmm. first thing in the morning at like 9 10 a.m um on the third day we went back at like 3 p.m 4 p.m something like that and that's when i'd recommend going because you get photographers there for sunset but otherwise most people have gone and it was so much quieter so much more peaceful so yeah. much less people to like you know bashing into you or like queuing up to get into certain areas or whatever so i'd recommend going after lunch because i think most people do it in the morning and then do yeah. like they kind of all the tour buses do the same thing they do angkor wat and then they do bayon and then they do this and then they do that and then they do the sunset hill so if you can do it the opposite way almost so like go to bayon temple in the morning <clears throat> maybe go to tafram in the morning and then go to angkor wat in the afternoon i think you'd have a much better day yeah tafron is probably the second most popular it's the one with all the tree taking over the walls and stuff like that that like you see very often on photographs and it was in Tomb, Tomb Raider, Raider yeah. movie and yeah this one is usually done in the afternoon so if you do this one first thing in the morning that's what we did on the third day it was fairly empty yeah so do this one first do whatever you want in the middle and do Angkor Wat past three uh, it's open until 5 30 I think or five you have yeah. enough time and yeah you're gonna avoid the crowd it's hot but i mean it's yeah. hot anyway to be honest so <laughs> and so tafram like we said is the famous one from tomb radio with the tree but there's also a couple of other temples that actually have trees in them as well so even though that one is the famous one it's not the only one with a tree blocking a doorway we actually saw about three or four yeah, that are very cool similar ones. um so i'll leave all my vlogs down below so you can go ahead and watch them or even just look at the description box because of each my each of my vlogs i add all the information of where we stay what we see what we do so you don't even have to watch the whole video if you don't want to so if you want to click on the day two of our bike trip for example and just see the description box of all the temples that we went to and then you can skip through and see what it looks like um there's going to be loads of links down below you have to go ahead and have a look at those but thank you so much for watching this video i really hope it was useful i hope it was helpful for you if you have any questions please do let us know in the comment section down below we love talking to you guys anything else no no well thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day and we hope to see you back here soon bye bye